So mom, I wanted to sit down with you today and talk to you about my brother Matt. And I know everybody has a lot of questions about him and how he's been doing. And so I've put together a few questions and I just wanted to sit and talk to you about Matt today and, and hear Matt's story from beginning to end. The first question I have for you is how did you find Matt Young and how did you find out about him? Well, it's a very interesting story. Dad and I adopted the girls and during the ad adoption process of Kimberlyn, I was sent a, a photograph an e in an email form from Love Without Boundaries, Amy Aldridge. And she said to me in the email, Jane, this photograph is not photoshopped. This is real. He had a, an overgrowth of that side of his face only. They called it a tumour, I think because they didn't have any other ideas of what it could be. So in China, uh, being a, an abandoned child, they aren't given the, the best medical yes. attention that you can get. And so you see a picture of him and he has what looks like a tumour, but you ended up finding out later this was an overgrowth, a genetic condition. Uh, condition. And it wasn't a, uh, a tumour growing, but this entire side of his face had overgrowth. Yes. Do you know why it was only that area? They don't know why. They don't because know. There, there are a couple of syndromes. Cloves syndrome, uh, there's another couple of them that all they're in the family of the PIC3 CAG mutation. And uh, at the time, they did not know what it was. They sent him to a heart surgeon and told him, remove the tumor. And of course, the heart surgeon was telling them, I'm a heart surgeon, I cannot remove a tumor. Right. And they were insisting that he did it. Love Without Boundaries said, no, 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 we'll find another solution speaking to the Chinese, you know, because Love Without Boundaries has healing homes in China and uh, most of the children that go to the healing homes are children with gene defects, mm -hmm. they have syndromes, uh, they're born with cleft palates, cleft lips, all this type of thing. Love Without Boundaries has a good rapport with the Chinese government and said, no, 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 let's see what we can do. I'm going to research it. Do you want me to say hi or just I'm? Yeah, I'm. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. I'm Amy Eldridge with Love Without Boundaries, um, which is an international charity that helps orphaned and vulnerable children around the world by providing medical care, education, nutrition, and foster care. I first met Jane through adoption because uh, she and Kim were adopting a little girl who was in our Heartbridge healing home outside of Beijing. And so their adoption agency put me in touch with them so I could just talk a little bit about their daughter with them. And we, the two of us just hit it off right away. And it was through that first phone call that I realized what a passion they had for helping children receive the medical care that they needed. This wonderful partnership began where we would work together to help as many children as possible. So when Jane and I first started talking, um, she was very honest with me and, and told me that she hadn't really known just how big of a need there was in China uh, regarding orphan children. At the time, there were over a million orphans in China Really, through that first adoption, when she was able to, you know, see the needs in the orphanages and realize that for so many kids, they were being uh, abandoned with often critical medical needs, and the orphanages just didn't have the funds available to help those kids. And so, in a lot of the, especially rural orphanages, the mortality rate at that time was really high. 
And I think just seeing it firsthand and you know, seeing all of the photos and the video that, that we would send her on children, we wanted to help. I mean, she's told me that her heart was forever changed and she knew that this was supposed to be part of her life's work um, to, to help the vulnerable, to help those most in need. And I, I can't even tell you, I mean, it's been hundreds and hundreds of children whose lives she's helped save. One day in January of 2013, we got a phone call from a really rural orphanage in Guizhou province, which at the time was one of the poorest provinces in China. And the director let us know that they had taken in about two years ago a three-year-old boy who was now five, and he said that the little boy had a, a large mass on his face. And they were starting to get really worried because it had started growing really quickly. And they were worried that it was going to actually cut off his air supply because he was starting to have trouble um, breathing and eating. So a few minutes later, after that call, I opened up my inbox on my email and there was this picture of this adorable little boy um, given the peace sign <laughs> and th that was it. I mean we were all in, fully committed, we were going to help this little boy get the medical care that he needed. Little Matt, unfortunately we had to send him by train 10 hours to Kunming so that he could have a biopsy done of his face. And we were so excited when it came back, it said it was benign, but then very concerned because the doctors at that hospital said that he really could lose his life if he didn't receive medical care. I reached out to Jane. I called Jane and I said, I know that you have a lot of contacts in Los Angeles, and would you take this little boy's file um, to the different hospitals in LA? And a few days later, she called me back and she said, well, I have really great news. She said, the LA Children says they can do this surgery. But then she basically said, are you sitting down? Because the estimate that they gave me is $100,000 for her surgery. Up to that point, we had done thousands of surgeries in China on orphan children, but the costs in China were a lot lower. And so we were usually trying to raise $1,000 to $5,000 for a surgery. And, you know, here's this beautiful five-year-old boy, and we're gonna need to raise $100,000. You know, we, the fundraiser we did for Bryant, um, the little boy with a tumor on his face, um, we, we, we are, did the fundraiser with Love Without Boundaries and Amy Aldridge, and she's here today. So okay, we, we, we must explain this, that th this is the um, lady we bonded with really and to do a lot of this work, this good work, and she's doing a fantastic work. And she's here today, she's, where are you from, Amy? Um, I'm from Oklahoma City. Okay, we'll forgive you for that. But and, I, and I'll forgive you for calling me up here today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, we've forgiven each other now. So anyway, just maybe just say hello to the people. Are they all over the world? They're maybe watching. They know say about you, of course. Bryant. Sure. Um, uh, Bryant. Right now, it's Chinese New Year, and so we're waiting for all the government officials to come back um, on the 25th of February um, to issue his passport, and then he'll need to travel up uh, to Chengdu, China, to hopefully get his medical visa. So that's what we're all praying for right now: is that the visa will, will be issued. Um, so hopefully he can get to America by March 1st. Yes. There was so, a point um, in the whole process of this process, which we're going back and forth between the Chinese uh, officials and Love Without Boundaries. And they were saying, no, they need to take the tumor out because we were saying the tumor is blocking his airway. He's, he, there's a point in time where he's not going to be able to breathe. So they knew that it was an urgent situation. Yes. We, of course, had shown him on our, on our broadcast, mm -hmm. Dad and I had. And uh, we were trying to find, actually, trying to find a family that would take him. 
Your name is Bryant. His Chinese name is Yong. And he's the one that has the huge tumor that we went to see him in China. Jane will let you know a little more about that. Yong is, is the little boy like Kim said with the tumor. And um, we went to the foster home where, he, where, where he's staying at the moment and uh, got to see him. Uh, he does need to get here urgently. And uh, you can play the, play the little clip there. I was helping because I'd had the experience of finding a solution for heart conditions that were very serious. Of course, Love Without Boundaries said, do you have any other ideas of how we could help this little boy? Then everything just came to a complete screeching halt. Because what we didn't know was that just about a month earlier, China had passed a new regulation that orphan children were no longer allowed to leave the country if a hospital in China, anywhere in China, could do the surgery. And I'll never forget the date. It was March 7th, 2013. I got a phone call that his permission was denied, that they weren't gonna let him come to the US because the officials felt that the surgery could be done at the hospital in Beijing. One of the phone calls that I had to make, of course, was to Jane. I will never forget that call. I, I know exactly where I was standing when I called her because I said, Jane, I have terrible news. Uh, they said, no, Matt can't come and, and go to LA Children's. And without a moment's hesitation, I mean, not even a second's hesitation. She said, well, then Kim and I are gonna adopt him and we're gonna make him our son because he's gonna get the medical care that he needs and there is no way that little boy's gonna die. He was found abandoned on a bridge in China, and a lady had uh, seen him on the side of the road crying, and had stopped her car and picked him up. And she said he was crying, Mama, Mama looking for his mother, and he was three years old. Can you imagine? Three years old on a tall bridge. When you looked over the edge of the bridge, it's down into a gorge. And he has a little three-year-old walking across a, a bridge in the middle of nowhere. Of course, it must have been uh, so terrifying yes. for him. Especially you know, being so young. So young and not and knowing where we, his mother was. Do we not have any information on who his parents No, were. but I do know from what Matt told me. He remembers climbing out of a hole. He was climbing, and he said the rocks were falling down. And uh, yeah, he's talking to me at this whole long story one day, and I was barely understanding what he was saying, but I put together that he was very, ner very scared because he was climbing out of a hole and he couldn't find his mother. The, the lady put him in the, in the car, took him to the nearest hospital. Here all these doctors are around him. They're trying to figure out what on earth is this thing on his face. And they're poking and prodding him and they're giving him little toys and this, this biscuit to eat and that cookie. And uh, meanwhile, opening up his mouth, checking him. It was, there's quite a scene going on in this Chinese hospital. So they called it a tumor, but in fact, it was not a tumor, an overgrowth syndrome. 
an overgrowth syndrome caused by the mutation of this gene, the pic 3 ca gene. So he was born with this? He was born with it, mm -hmm. and he had this black kind of moles, a black a mole, mole yes, skin that. on that side of his face, which must have been part of the cause of this problem. You ended up adopting Matt. Uh, how did that come about, and what did Daddy feel about it? Well, Dad, had, we, we, he'd been uh, involved with the process of me trying to find a solution for this little boy, trying to find a family for him. So he'd gone through the process of this whole thing. We were trying to help this child get a family. Because we just adopted Kimberlyn, our paperwork was up to date and it would cut in half the time. And because Matt's situation was so dire, so we chartered a plane and we, we went to because we knew it was going to be a medical situation. So we had oxygen and everything on that plane, and we got him and brought him back. Yeah, we got his adoption file done. <laughs> and we, we actually got it expedited. To this day, it's still the fastest adoption file I've ever seen made within I think it was two weeks, Matt's file was at the national level. I think when you're in the middle of a crisis and when everything's kind of crumbling down, it's really hard to see God's plan in that. And I think we were all feeling like everything was crumbling because here we had an orphanage that had reached out for help. We had the hospital, we had the surgeon, we had all the funds raised, and then we got a no. And I, I just couldn't believe it. I, I, I kept asking God, you know, why can't this little boy come to America and have his surgery? And now when I look back at it, and I see this beautiful plan that if his surgery wouldn't have been stopped, then his adoption file might never have been made. And then those kids whose lives were saved because the money came in and then had to be reallocated, when I think of all of the lives they're gonna go on and impact, um, it's just incredible to me. And then the best part of all of it, the ironic part of it is that we had worked so hard to bring him to LA Children's Hospital. And then a few officials said he, you know, he couldn't go. And that's where he ended up anyway. He ended up being adopted to LA and going to LA Children's Hospital. And what I love the most is that instead of coming from China with an orphanage worker who may not have even have known him that well, he got to have that surgery with a mom and with a mom and dad, which is just the greatest thing to an orphan child in the world. Me and you are going okay. to go in this room, okay? You and me, kind of like before. Okay. Remember that? Remember that? You've had a number of surgeries for Matt. Yes, he's had four major surgeries. And uh, I know the first one was to remove some of that. Mass. So the, the first one was a debulking surgery. Yes. They didn't touch the bone, but they debulked all the fatty tissue out of his face, cut him from the top of his head all the way around. That was the first major surgery. The, the first surgery he had was to trach him. He had to be still for seven days whilst a stoma formed. Uh, they make a hole in the neck and then they, they wait for a stoma to form and then they put in the, the permanent trach that gets changed every week or so, every seven days. You change the trach out. And during that process, Matt became a little drug addict, was terrified of everything, said there were monsters in the room. Oh, scary things are there. Oh, oh, oh. He put the gloves on his feet and his hands, and he had his torch. And uh, he, he would scream and cry, and we'd have to hold him and 
Tell him it's okay, everything's, it's not, it's just in your mind. Yeah, baby, it's okay, it's okay. And then and we have to... Because he had to remain still for so they, a certain amount of time for that scar tissue or whatever yes, and so, to form. Yes. And so they needed to keep him sedated, but in the process of that, he became addicted to the medications they Correct. were giving him to keep him sedated, so then he had to be weaned. He, uh, because of the fact that we just adopted him, he didn't know who we were, really. I mean, he, he called us Mama and Baba, but he didn't really connect with us after 10 days of adopting him. Yes. And the urgency of that first surgery was that the overgrowth was inhibiting his, his airway. Correct. And so he wasn't able to breathe, so no. he needed that trach surgery Correct. done first, so he could yes. breathe. And, and there was no, apnea. the equipment that they have here for people with sleep apnea yes. would not fit on his face because of the overgrowth. Oh. So they couldn't use uh, that device for normal people who have sleep apnea, there's a device that they use, I can't remember what it's called now, but he, they couldn't use that because of the fact that because this side of his face was too big. And you know that he's gonna still need more surgeries in the he's future. He's gonna need a couple more surgeries, uh, and so that trach is necessary. But there's also a new drug that, or medication that they've... So right now the FDA has approved a drug that stops the mutation of the pic 3 ca gene and it's a breakthrough drug and it's very very exciting to us because people with cloves they've given this drug to like an overgrowth on the leg yes. and you can watch how that just shrinks it's amazing and so that is what is matt is going to be having uh, within the next month or so and then he's already long, been approved for it so how long will the 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 effects of the of the medication take? I think it was 30 days. You can start to see. That quickly? Yes, you can start to see the change. So once that's done? He'll be on that for a year. And then he has, his ear is also overgrown. So we don't, don't know what's gonna happen to the ear. It might shrink a bit, I don't know. Yes. But if, if it doesn't or, I mean, it's still quite large. They may do plastic surgery on it or they may just remove it. But we wanna see how this medication works. That's and what, what they want to do. Happens. They want to see how this medication is going to work on him. Well, that's very good news and that's very exciting. Yes. To know that that's happening soon too. Yeah. So he's been on quite a medical journey. Uh, there's been a lot of trauma in his life. How was his relationship with daddy from the beginning? Oh no, daddy from the beginning was number one for Matt because me dealing with the girls, with Jacqueline, uh, dad had to step in and help deal with Matt. And so they got very close and um, Matt loved his baba. And Dad loved him. Yes. I've, I've seen so many of Dad's videos of, of him just filming Matt playing and um, him kissing and loving him. And uh, I know he loved to let him go up on, on the broadcast sometimes yeah. and run around and let yes. people see and everybody see um, uh, what a beautiful boy he is. Yes. Hello, my boy. How are you doing? My dad's always been very good with kids. He loves kids. Well, he loved kids. And um, they loved him. Uh, he would always play with them. Well, he had to work for them at first. He, they didn't like him at first. They were afraid of him at first. He was, I think he was too loud, and they, he was a man, and they were afraid of men. They were always taken care of by women. And so um, they had a certain intimidation with men. So they were very hesitant around him at first, but he was very determined. And, uh, and they loved him. They, yeah, they always play with him and he would play songs with them. And, and with Matt in particular, he was very good because Matt's the boy and he listened to my dad. When we first got him, he was very um, angry all the time. He, would, he was very angry and he would shut down. And if he didn't like what you were saying to him, he would just completely shut down and sit on the floor and not respond to anything that you were saying to him or doing. And, he would just not respond. And if you tried to make him, he would kick and punch and fight you. 
And so Matt was very angry when we first got him. And the only person who would really listen to was my dad, because my dad, you know, my dad would sit and talk to him. And, and, and he, he responded to it really well. Jesus made the difference in me. How did Matt handle losing daddy? Well, all the children handled it, uh, didn't handle it well. And they, I think it's, they understood to a degree what was going on, but the two little ones didn't. It's shelly Ann and Mia mm. and Matt that uh, were affected by it, right. definitely. I mean, here they're abandoned, then they get a mama and a baba, and then the, ba his, the baba dies. Uh, Mia often will just burst into tears. I know that and say, I miss my baba. Mm -hmm. um, so do I. I know. <laughs> so but how has Matt handled it? Well, and Matt, he doesn't like to show his emotion. Mm. You know, he, he does hold that back. He doesn't cry. He, he will just say, I miss my baba. Yeah, he can hear you. Well, why don't you shout to him? He'll hear you. No, he knows. Jesus! Jesus, that's right. Now, you know what? He can he can see you. He made this tree. That's him and me. Yeah, he looks at you right now. What do you think of that? <laughs> I am Rachel Clement. I'm married to Caleb Clement. He's the middle natural child of uh, Kim and Jane. After Kim died, the days after, we were all kind of, first of all, we'd been at the hospital for like three days and no, no adult had slept. And we came home and the kids, we really just, the kids had no idea what was going on at that point. And Caleb and Jacqueline and I brought them into our bedroom and we told them what had happened. And Mia knew instantly. She understood what that meant and she got sad like, and Matt and Leanne did not understand. <laughs> they did not understand at all. And part of that was a blessing because they weren't hurting from it. You know, they'd been hurting for however long he'd been sick and it was just another thing. And so I don't think they understood. Everything that he's been through in his life, you can imagine being abandoned, looking for your mother, uh, going in an orphanage, having kids laugh at you and reject you because you've got this on your face. He's built up a wall mm. that for the last six years we've been breaking down. And he's turning out to be such a loving child. Ew. <laughs> hey, hey. When we adopted Matt, he was six years old. He was very skinny, very tiny. Yes. And right now he's he's taller than me. He's big. And big he's and strong. strong. He's he's a strong little guy. Well he uh, gets he, he gets busy with the animals and everything and helps out. Oh he loves helping, especially with animals. So we've got goats, the pigs, the sheep the horses, the chickens, the ducks, the geese, and Matt Young is involved in the whole thing. He, f he takes his job very seriously. I think moving here and having a new routine, starting a new school, which has been amazing, but the biggest thing is he has so much important work that he does at home every day. And especially he and Caleb, they work their butts off every day. Um, Matt has a ton of responsibility. Matt is the first one to volunteer to do something. He never complains. And his teachers have told me that he talks about it all the time and it gives him a lot of pride. So what have you noticed since he started middle school now? Because he's going to a different school in Shale and Mia and Shushu. Right, he, this is the first time he's going Alone. Alone to school without the two girls, which yeah. is uh, go actually good for him. Ready? Come on, go! Go! One second! Take it down now. When we moved to Tennessee, um, 
the he has what's called an IEP, which is, I believe, an individualized education plan. And that has to do with evaluating what services he needs and can receive and for what amount of time and all of that stuff. And that came with him. We had a big, huge meeting for all the kids, but Matt was a big part of this meeting, getting him into a new school um, to decide what to do with him. And the special ed coordinator said, this is gonna sound scary, but I want to put him in a mainstream classroom and see what happens. All right, let's get shot. The whole school was told about him, that he needed friends and no one's to tease him, no one's to do anything that would harm him. And so he's kind of like a little celebrity at school. So everyone knows who he is and that he's very important. He's just, he does really well in school. He wants to go every day. He never wants to miss school. You know, it's not like, you know, he deals with like kids just the same way. He does. He goes and he talks to them. And if they're being cruel, then he gets mad. And you know what I mean. But he'll he deals with it constructively. He does. He, he's he's very he's doing really well. I have to say he's improved a great deal. His behavioral stuff, like from when we first got him to now, he is doing really well. <laughs> How do you see, going forward, what God wants you to do um, in continuation of this Well, uh, you know, when I adopted, when we adopted, Dad and I, Charlianne and then Mia, who they said if she didn't have heart surgery, she was not going to make it. Kimberlyn as well, right. she, she wouldn't have made it either. Now, all four girls had defected hearts. Mia and Kimberlyn's, of course, was the worst. And they both have damage to their lungs because of the heart situation. So that's an ongoing process that we're, an ongoing condition that we're dealing with. But it's to keep their lungs open because they both have pulmonary hypertension and uh, they take medication every day, three, four times a day, and they can't live without it. What we were doing just after, um, we adopted Shalianne and Mia, was we were paying for surgeries for children around around uh, China that were abandoned because of their heart conditions. And uh, we were able to make a connection, of course, in Israel with the Wolfson Medical Center who uh, would do the surgeries for $10,000 a child. Mm. And I've lost count of how many children we actually paid for but we paid for many children over the years. And it's because of the, the wonderful partners of the House of Destiny, yes. our ministry, that uh, are part of that because it's them that actually helped us yes. do it. So although I have uh, five children in my house, uh, I feel like all of them are part of what we've yes. done. I may be the hands-on, but they're gonna get the reward of helping us do what we do. I think that we should help kids. There's a lot of places in the world where they do terrible things to children. And I think that we need to stop that. Everybody says we're progressive, yeah. I don't see progressiveness if there's still places in the world where children are being murdered and left to die in dying rooms. I think that's very, very anti-progressive. What I would hope for anyone who watches Matt's story is that they would know that there are mats all over the world in almost every orphanage, there are children with medical needs and special needs who need so badly for someone to believe in them. For some people, that might be a call to adopt. And there are literally thousands of children on lists all around the world with medical needs who need someone to, to call them a son or a daughter. But I know that's not possible for everyone, so there are lots of other ways you can get involved. You know, there's there's organizations like, like ours, like Love Without Boundaries, House of Destiny. They support so many wonderful projects all around the world. And, you know, you can make a donation. That That's how all of our, our projects work. That's how we get the medical care to the kids in need. 
You can also advocate if you can't adopt. You can find children that are waiting for homes and just spread the news that they're waiting. There's all sorts of websites with, with children who are looking for homes. And pray for the children that they can hold on until that one person walks into their orphanage and says, I see you and we're gonna do everything possible to get you the help that you need. You know, Jane and I came to America in 1981. And in 1983, I started watching um, television and um, in, in America. I mean, watching Christian TV because we, you know, we, we were so poor we couldn't afford anything uh, for the first few years that we, we came here to minister. And one day I was watching, I, I, I was in the house, we were staying in... Um, a friend's house that Fiona actually introduced us to, looked after us while we were there. Her name was Nana Lou Kemp. And she took care of missionaries and she took care of Jane and I. And we stayed in her home and drove her little car around, the extra car she had. Um, and um, I remember walking by the t television and Paul Crouch Sr. was on in 1983. And he was speaking about China. And he said... He was raising money to, to build and to help and to do his mission in China because you know what China's like in terms of religion, even today. And uh, I, I stopped for a minute and I thought, and I didn't have any money. All, I didn't even have a credit card. I had a checkbook. At most, you know, if you have a checkbook you, that you can bounce, well, that's one I had. <laughs> anyway, so I had something like maybe 25 or $30 in it. And I th said to my, the Lord said to me, I want you to sow into China and do it now. And I remember taking the last little bit of money I had and sowing it to that specific cause and sending that offering to Paul Crouch or to TBN in 1983. It was almost 30 years later that China was open to us in a very, very special and beautiful way. And when Jane was sitting on the bed weeping every day, and I, this is not Jane, I don't know her to do this. And eventually she asked me to pray and the rest is history, most of you know it. And we eventually decided to adopt one special needs child and then decided we should adopt two of them and then a third one and then a fourth one. One that was so disfigured that nobody wanted him. This was the gift that God gave to us for that $20 offering almost 30 years ago. And Jane is, through her wonderful mission, has supplied help to hundreds of little children in China that have, would have been given up to die and sponsored their surgeries most of them lived because of it. And that was because I took an offering and sowed it. You may be saying, oh, that's, that's ridiculous. Well, you go ahead and think whatever you like. But that's what I saw that day. It's definitely given me a purpose to live. Definitely given me purpose. I know Kim is in heaven and he's watching down and we don't even know really why he was taken. But you know, the children are still thriving. Mm -hmm. they're, they're doing fine. And that's and what he would want. He would. I mean, not everyone's called to do what I've done, but everyone can be, have a part in it yes. by helping us do what we do. Yes. And so that is the main, main reason. And that is why uh, God put you on the path he put you on when he did. That's correct. And the timing of that and the season is all very important when, as well. Retrospectively, when yes. we look back, I mean, what would I be doing now with no children? None of those children. I'd be alone. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my reason to live <laughs> right now. <laughs> yes. Chicken? Come on, I can have food. I can have food. Look at his big claws. Claws. <laughs> <laughs> look at those feet. Don't rip it, Mom. Wow. For me and for everyone out there, it's, it's, a, it's a mission we're doing together. And so I feel very, very uh, 
compelled mm. to keep doing what I'm doing because God has put me on this pathway and I can't turn back. No. Thank you so much for watching this special story, Dear to My Heart. I have five special needs children and my mission in life is to help the helpless. I know that not everyone can do what I did, but you can do something. Join me and become a Boots on the Ground partner today. When you become a sustaining partner, your $25 per month goes to helping children like Matt. If it were not for generous donations by people like you, we wouldn't be able to save thousands of children just like Matt. So click the banner below and become a Boots on the Ground partner or give a one-time donation today. Thank you again for your support, love and friendship. It really means so much to me and all of us here at the House of Destiny.